cameras rolling in three, two, one. Everyone shout revival! Shake the nation! Come on, shout to the Lord if you believe that. Amen. Deep inside me is calling out to the deep in him. I mean the deep in me is calling out for mega power, for mega grace. Welcome to today's broadcast, All for the Kingdom. Uh, I'm Tom Scarella. Listen, we love you and bless you today. Thanks so much for tuning in to today's broadcast. Uh, we pray that today that uh, God just really stirs some fresh things in your heart and your life for power ministry and to minister in the power of God and, and to uh, minister with the fire and minister with signs, wonders, and miracles like never before. And so I pray that today's broadcast blesses you. And in weeks gone by in previous sessions that we've, we've had with you, uh, we've talked about power ministry and supernatural outreach or supernatural evangelism and, and how to get started. Some practical things as well as the Word of God and what God says about it and, and what God says about outreach and what God says about uh, ministering to people and stuff. And so uh, the last time we talked about divine healing and we talked about how to minister in healing to people, how to minister to people uh, for divine healing and how to impact them in power ministry outside of a church setting. Now, the last time I said to you that the ministry of the teacher comes with information. The ministry of the pastor comes with more comfort and exhortation, but the ministry of the prophet comes with uh, revelation. But then the evangelist comes, and the evangelist comes with the message of demonstration and manifestation. And so that's really our ministry is about demonstrating and manifesting. It's about demonstrating the kingdom and manifesting the kingdom wherever we go. And not just in a church setting, but even outside of a church setting. And so if you really get that revelation that God wants to do so much for you and with you outside of a church setting, uh, you'll be shocked and blessed and, and just totally transformed. There's a transforming power uh, that comes with it. And so uh, today, if you have your Bibles, I want you to uh, go with me again to where we left off the last time. The last time we talked about uh, Luke chapter 4. Now Luke chapter 4 says, verse 18, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because He has anointed me. So he says, he's anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor, and he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Okay, so here he begins to say, listen, there's a purpose for the power. There's purpose for revelation. God gives you and I revelation. There's a purpose for revelation and information and even exhortation. But there's a purpose is, is to demonstrate or to manifest. So the purpose is to do something. Blessed are they that are doers of the word, not just hearers only. So there's a blessing on doing the word. So there's something about doing something with what you've received. And so what do I mean by that? Well, I mean by that this is that outside of a church setting, God wants you to begin to function as Christ, to manifest the kingdom of God, to manifest the Christ to the nations of the world. That you'd begin to manifest the Christ wherever you go. You go over here to the grocery store, you go over here to work or wherever it might be, and you begin to manifest the kingdom of God. Uh, we were ministering in one part of, of the U.S., uh, the state of Ohio, and while we were ministering there, um, we went to this church and we began to share along this lines and began to take people out to minister. And the youth pastor was so touched and so impacted, he began to weep and he began to tell me, he said, you know, all my life I've worked in this secular job and I've never once shared the gospel with anyone. I've never preached the gospel, ever. I've never demonstrated. I've invited people to church, but I've never shown Christ. Oh, I, he said, I've been good and, you know, not cursed and not done this and not done that. But he says, really, to demonstrate. It's not what I'm not doing. It's what am I doing? 
And he said, this is the first time in my entire life that I'm actually demonstrating and manifesting the kingdom of God and showing people that God is good so that they can taste and see that the Lord is good. There's something about that that we can begin to demonstrate that to people. One of the main ways that Jesus did that to show people Christ, excuse me, to show people God the Father, to show the Father was through healing. Through healing, through healing the sick. That God is always in the business of healing. It's the number one manifestation of this kingdom. It's the number one manifestation of God's goodness and God's love is that He heals. It, and so when we have a mindset, listen, God is the healer. He's not the cursor. He's not the, you know, He's not the one that gives you cancer. He's not the one that strikes you down with a blood disease. But we have a, have a different mindset. We have to have a kingdom mindset of that God, every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, of whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning, the Bible says. So as we have that mindset that God gives good gifts, He wants to give good. He wants to do good for people. And when you have that mindset that God wants to do good and God wants to manifest good, no matter if the person is a, a total heathen, no matter if that person is a, a whatever it is that they're involved in. So the message of God's love is conveyed in his healing power. So as you begin to heal the sick, the sick see and know that God loves them. So there's a demonstration of God's love. It's not just in word only. Now all of a sudden there's a demonstration of it. And you can begin to show God's love by a demonstration of God's goodness. And you can begin to do that with all kinds of different people, all kinds of different heathen, people who, even witches, or even people that are just so far from God that you never think would come to Christ. Now, I, I, I can't say uh, so much outside of the church, but I remember ministering in a church in Norway. We had a girl that came, and she was an atheist, just totally was against anything to do with God. And uh, I... I prayed. I said, God, give me a word for this girl. And they were mocking and making fun of the service. And God spoke to me and God said, this girl's got uh, scoliosis. So I went and I said, do you have scoliosis? And she was shocked. And so she came on down to the front and I grew her legs out. And when her leg grew out, like about that far, all the bones in her back began to pop and go back into place. And she began to weep and cry. And she jumped up and ran out of the church. She was just so shocked that it was real, that she experienced it. She felt God's presence in that moment. And uh, so there was a demonstration of the love of God. So you can do it by healing the sick. So the last time I said to you this is begin to go to public places, start to look in public places for sick people. Start to look for them, start to pray. God, begin to show me some sick people. Show me some hurting people. Or go where you know there are sick people. That's a great way. Just go where you know they are. Uh, you go to clinics, you go to hospitals, you go to uh, convalescent homes, nursing homes, uh, psychiatric wards, whatever. You see there's hurting, dying people there. You already know it because that's where they go to. And go there and start healing the sick. Start going and ministering to the sick. And in so doing, there is a demonstration of the love of God. There's a demonstration of God's love. God's love begins to be shown to those people. Now, another way that you can do it, a very practical way that you can do it, is actually found in John chapter 5. So if you want to go with me to John chapter 5, this was William Branham's uh, most famous verse. Uh, he loved this scripture, and he quoted it quite often. In John chapter 5, Verse 17, Jesus answered them, My father has been working until now, and I have been working. Therefore, the Jews sought all the more to kill him, because not that he broke the Sabbath, but he also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. Then Jesus answered and said to them, Most assuredly, I say to you, the son can do nothing of himself. The son can do nothing of himself. Now, if you notice in your Bible, the word son is capitalized. Now, you have to understand in the original Greek, it was not capitalized. That was done by the translators. They thought, well, we want to show that he's speaking about himself. But we could say it like this. You and I are both sons. We're sons of God. So the son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the father do. For whatever he does, the son does also in like manner or, or after the same pattern or after the same manner. There's a, a pattern that God may show supernaturally in 
a vision of healing the sick. So the father loves the son and shows him. So I'll say that again. The father loves the son. So what does he do? He demonstrates it. He shows him. So the father loves the son and shows him all things that he himself does. And he will show him greater works than these that you may marvel. So what do we see? That we see Jesus going into the book of John. <coughs> Excuse me. We see Jesus ministering. And what does Jesus do in the book of John? He comes to uh, a pool of Bethesda filled with sick people, tons of sick people everywhere. So what does Jesus do in the midst of this? He goes up and what does he do? He ministers to one sick person where there's literally probably hundreds of sick people. Why did he do that? Because he saw the Father healing that person. Often, especially in church services, that's what I do. I, I have many minister friends who do the same thing. Prophet Corbus does the same thing. Many others do that. And they look for the one that the Father's already ministering to, and that's the one they single out first, and then they do the others last. But there's something about saying, Father, what is it that you're doing? And you have a flash across your mind. So how does it come? How does God speak this way through what we call words and knowledge? How does God speak? Well, the first way he does is by a word. All of a sudden, a, a thought will come to your head. Or number two is by a picture, because we always say a picture is worth a thousand words. So God gives you a picture. You see yourself do something. Okay. Number three is you just know it. You just feel it in your heart. You just know it. You don't know how you know it. And then lastly, you hear it. You actually could possibly hear it. So those are the four ways that God will speak to you that way through these words of knowledge. But I want to single in mainly on the one where you begin to see it. Because more often than not, God will speak to you through a picture in your mind. You will have a picture of somebody who is sick, who is dying, who is hurting. And you'll have a picture of them and you will see them doing. You'll see them in a particular place and they need healing. So as you see that picture, now all of a sudden you're moved upon by the Spirit to go minister to that person. So you can even make it as a fun thing that you can begin to pray in the spirit and say, God begin to show us. And all of a sudden someone may say, well, I see the word grocery store, or I see the word and you see a store or, or a building or a school or whatever it might be. And all of a sudden God begins to give you detailed clues. Now this is where Bill Johnson and his ministry came up with for the treasure hunt. I mean, it's an awesome prophetic exercise to find hurting people. But in particular, sick people. In particular, sick people. We've seen it so many times where God has shown us where the sick people are. And we've said, okay, Lord, you know where they are. Maybe there's a, a big you know, supermarket where you live. Or I know like here in America, we have uh, Walmarts and these massive stores. Uh, or maybe in Canada, they've got what they call Canadian Tire. And it's just these massive buildings. And so you know there's sick people in there. So you could even kind of play a game with it. All right, Lord, I'm going to pray right now. And you're going to show me where. And all of a sudden, you close your eyes and you start to pray. And as you do, maybe you see a garden hose. You say, oh, they're over in the garden hose area. So now you begin to go over to the garden hose area. And now you begin to pray even more. And in your spirit, maybe you see a picture of a lady with a neck brace. And then all of a sudden you see another picture of her in a car in an accident. And so all of a sudden God is saying what? This woman had a car accident, hurt her neck, and there she is in the garden, garden area of this building. So now you go there and you can minister and say to her, hey, listen, I'm a woman of God or I'm a man of God and uh, I, I want to minister to you. I, I, I just want to pray for you. I see you're in pain. And uh, yeah, I had an accident. And so all of a sudden now you see you're seeing right. Or you can even step out and say, you know, did you have an accident? Did you have a car accident or something? Wow, I was praying for you and I saw that. And God, listen, God loves you and he just wants to minister to you and help you. And he doesn't want you to be in pain anymore. God sees you're in pain all the time. He doesn't want you to be in pain anymore. And that's why he sent me. Can I just pray for you very quickly? And most people will be kind enough to allow you to do it that you can begin to just step out and just say, hey, if it's okay with you, would that be all right with you if I just prayed for you? Now, some of them will assume that you're going to pray for them later, but that's okay. And you can just say to them, no, I want to pray for you right now. 
and I won't embarrass you. And, and I'll, I'll just put my hand on him and I'll just speak to that sickness or that disease or that, that neck pain. I just pray in the name of Jesus that neck would be healed right now. Every nerve and muscle and tendon would pop back into place right now. The bones would pop back in and all the damage would go in Jesus' name. And I tell that person, now do something. Try to see, is the pain gone? It's a key to healing. A key to healing is getting the sick to do something. Isn't that funny? One, God wants us to do something. Two, God wants the sick to do something. So it's not enough just to pray a prayer, but now they have to do something. So when Jesus ministers to the man with the withered arm, what does he say? Straighten it out. To the man who's lame, what does he say? Stand up. In other words, do what you couldn't do. There has to be subsequent action. There, excuse me, reaction to God's action. So God speaks. Now God wants you to move. God wants you to do something. You have to do something. You can't just sit back anymore. Now you've got this. God has spoken. God has launched this into your heart. Now, what does he want you to do? He wants you to step out in faith and begin to step out and begin to act on it. God wants you to act. He wants you to manifest. He wants you to demonstrate, you know, and you don't have to be spooky spiritual about it. Yea, thus saith the Lord, I would say unto thee, my little children. <laughs> you know, you don't have to be bizarro, but you could be very normal, very naturally supernatural. You can be very naturally supernatural. So no matter where you are, maybe you're on an airplane and you see somebody who's sick or who's in pain or whatever it might be, and you can minister to that person. But it begins not just by meditation. Yes, meditation's good. You meditate and you see yourself doing it and stuff. Praise God. That stirs inside you a, a, a hunger for the supernatural. Praise God. Do that, do that, do that. But don't stop there. You have to get out of the boat. You have to step out of comfort. And you have to begin to manifest. And as you begin to step out, all of a sudden, God begins to show up. Every time you step out, God shows up. Smith Wigglesworth said it like this, the greater I step out, the more God shows up. So the greater you step out today, the greater God will begin to show up in your life. So as you just begin to say, you know what? Never done this before in my life, but I'm going to go for it. I'm just going to try it. You know, hey, just do it. Just begin to do, begin to practice these things. I mean, look over in the book of um, Philippians, I believe. And you'll find something very interesting in Philippians that uh, the Apostle Paul says. And he begins to speak along this, along this line. So he begins to speak about meditating. And he begins to speak about uh, acting on these things and begin to do these things and begin to have this mindset inside you. So what does Paul say in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, let this mind be in you who is also in Christ, who in the form of God considered not uh, robbery to be called equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form, form of a bondservant in the likeness of men. And he humbled himself, the Bible says. So in several different places, he begins to speak about the exact same thing. Paul began to say this in uh, Philippians chapter 4. He says here, verse 6, be anxious for nothing. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever is noble, whatever is just and right, what things are pure, whatever things are lovely, of good report, if there's any virtue, if there's any praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things that you have learned and received and heard and saw in me, do, and the God of peace will be with you. So what is Paul saying? Paul, This is the last chapter Paul is going to write on planet Earth. So what does Paul say? Don't be worrisome. Don't walk in fear. Think on good things. Meditate on them. But then the things you learned, you received, you heard, you saw, do, and the God of peace will be with you. So what is Paul saying? Paul's saying, listen, it's not about just receiving, it's about doing. There's something about giving it out, that as you give it out, you receive it back. Some of the greatest miracles have been when you just gave it out. I remember years ago when I was going to Bible school, I was going to Bible school in Tulsa at Rama Bible Training Center. 
and I remember ministering there and excuse me going to school there and, and, and going on to the evangelistic ministry and a young man I worked with I was witnessing to him and sharing Christ with him and and uh, one night I said to him I said hey come on over to the house let's have a bite to eat and it was late at night it was probably 10 11 o'clock and he came on over and, and I could see God was really working him over he was a backslider and so I began to start to prophesy into him, and he starts crying. I start telling him about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Laid hands on him in my living room. Power of God hit him. He's weeping and crying, speaking in tongues, changed his life. He ends up going to Rhema Bible Training Center to go into the ministry. So how did that happen? As I did it. It's, it's by doing. You have to just begin to do it. So back to practical. How, how can I do this? Well, we talked about healing. You could look for sick people. Wherever you go, pray for them. Pray for him. It's by just practice. It's just by doing it. Uh, I've got a friend of mine who's an evangelist who God uses him to heal the sick for deafness. And he says, Tom, I prayed for 50 deaf people before I saw the first one healed. But he says, I refuse to quit. I refuse to back off. He said, I just, the, 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 you know, I, I just refuse to quit. I'm just going to keep doing it until one of them gets healed. And he said, about the 50th person I prayed for, they were healed. He said, I'd, I'd go wherever I'd go. If somebody had hearing aids, I'd say, take your hearing aids out. I want to pray for your hearing. And he said, I prayed for probably 50 deaf people before the first one heard. There's something about a tenacity in this. One, there's really a tenacity in it that you just got to just go for it. And you just got to just say, I'm going to do it no matter what. I don't care what people think. Number two, there's that supernatural element where you can begin to say, God, begin to show me. Give me a vision. God, show me. You know where they are. You know where these sick people are. You know where these hurting people are. Or these people that are dying. There's somebody that's here that's dying tonight, Lord. Show them to me right now. And so you can begin to do that. You can begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. Pray in the Spirit and interpret it back to yourself. And as you pray in the Spirit and interpret it back to your mind uh, about where these sick people are. And then go minister healing to them. So you're mixing the prophetic and the anoint, excuse me, and the, the words of knowledge with miracle signs and wonders. So it's by doing it. It's by doing it. It's by doing it. Do I believe in impartations? Yes. The greatest impartation you get is by doing. There's something about just doing it, doing it, doing it, doing it, and God will show up. And so there has to be a bulldog ten tenacity in you. And so today I encourage you. You go out somewhere today or you go out somewhere tonight and you just begin to say, God, give me a word. Give me a word for the waitress at the, at the restaurant. You know, you're going to this, you know, you're going to Nando's or something like that. And you're like, all right, God, give me a prophetic word. And I want to minister healing to this person. And, and uh, bam, that person gets touched with the power of God right there in the restaurant. I, I've done that before where we've ministered to a waitress. And I began to prophesy over her, and she had hurt her wrist. She had a wrist brace. That's how it all started. And I just told her I wanted to pray for her wrist. She had carpal tunnel syndrome. So I prayed for her, and she was healed. And she gave her life to Christ. It totally radically changed. I'm telling you, we felt God's power just fall at the table. I mean, just an anointing. It was like a shower of the love of God as we ministered to this girl. She, she actually had to leave and go back into the back and get one of her colleagues to come out and, and to help us because she was weeping so hard that God touched her and God saved her like that. And so there's something about doing. There's a blessing in doing it and just going for it. And just God wants to use you in he healing. So healing the sick is one of the greatest ways of power ministry of supernatural evangelism. Hallelujah. Well, listen, today we, we appreciate you tuning into the broadcast. And uh, I really want to say this to you. Please, seriously, help us. Help us to touch the nations of the world. We're going into several different nations this year. And uh, a whole bunch of different places that we're going all over the world. We've already been to like four countries this year. And uh, we're looking to go into probably about another six to eight other ones here before the end of the year. So listen, help us by partnering with us. You can partner with us right on our website at www.sharethefire.com. Dot org. That's one of the ways you can do it, or there's other ways that you can do it. You can partner with us as well financially and uh, send something in. Help us every month. 
Listen, it's our consistent monthly financial partners that help us to go into the foreign field. That's how we go into Tanzania. That's how we go into Uganda. That's how we go into Lesotho. That's how we go into various different countries of the world, Denmark and some other different places. That's how we go to those places because you partner with us. And so we really need you to help us if you could. And every month we'll give you a revival CD or a DVD every single month. Sometimes it's me and sometimes it's other people. But I say that for this reason is we really need several of you to step to the plate. Seriously, consider partnering with us today and help us touch the nations with Revival Fire. And uh, we love and appreciate you uh, for watching this broadcast all for the kingdom. I pray that it really stirred your heart to heal the sick, to move in power ministry like never before. Amen. Bless you. Thanks for tuning in.